Thanks for joining us today on this week's episode of Commission Ed. I'm Reed, and today we're going to talk about another rated officer career field, the 18X Remotely Piloted Aircraft Pilot. Right. Like you said, Reed, this is a rated career field. They are pilots. And so this career field is selected and trained and developed very similarly to the pilot career field and some and the other rated career fields that we've covered previously. Yes, the one primary difference is that they're going to be employing a weapon system remotely. And that gets into the heart of one of the neatest things about this career field. If you want to be on the forefront of innovation of technology, this is absolutely the place for you. This is a growth area. We are never going back to a force that doesn't have these remotely piloted weapon systems. They're incredibly valuable. They're incredibly lethal. And we're just never going to be without them again. So this is a huge area of growth and you're really on the forefront of technology on this one. Absolutely. And we did a fantastic interview with an RPA pilot who really put this weapon system, this capability into perspective for us. He asked one of the most important questions that I have ever heard in any of the interviews that we've done. He said, do I love aircraft or do I love air power? And that is such an important way to think about what this capability or what this career field provides is that uh, long-term persistent air power on behalf of the Air Force in any type of circumstance and mission that we uh, may find ourselves in. Exactly. So as Colin mentioned, this is a rated career field. And as a result, you're going to have to compete with and be selected from other people trying to compete for rated positions. Now, that means you're also going to have a long training pipeline. You're going to have to go to initial flight training in Pueblo, Colorado to get qualified to fly aircraft because that's what you're going to be doing. After that, it's going to be followed with nine months of undergraduate RPA training. Right. And the flight training unit for RPA is located at Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico. There are a few other locations that you could be stationed at as an RPA pilot. Uh, Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, Ellsworth in South Dakota, and a few others all over the place. But one thing that you need to know if you're getting into this career field, you are going to deploy. Even though these aircraft are operated remotely, which is in the name, they have to be launched and recovered using the human eyeball from the airfield where these are actually being flown. So there's a handoff that occurs, but there's a pilot at a launch and recovery element or LRE who is going to take the aircraft off and then turn the aircraft over to a pilot somewhere at one of these garrison locations back in the US. Yeah, and one thing that I can say about those pilots who are in those deployed locations, I've been deployed with some of these RPA pilots and it has been fantastic to hear about what they're capable of because they're no longer stuck in the, in the cockpit because they're on the ground and the aircraft is no longer subject to human limitations. There are some really amazing things that we're able to do in being present constantly overhead of the enemy and providing that that eyeballs on scene what's going on that really makes our ability to uh, deploy air power that much better. Yeah, Colin, you mentioned the limitations of the human element of these weapon systems being very different than what you get with a manned aircraft. Some of these RPA pilots will accrue a thousand hours really, really quickly because they're able to continually be operating these weapon systems. Uh, we've mentioned the technology involved in these is really exciting and the innovation that comes out of these units is also really exciting. Because they're on the forefront of what it means to employ air power, you have a lot of really active minds that are creating new and innovative ways to get after these targets. And a lot of the best and brightest ideas that have come out of the Air Force in recent memory have come out of these units. Absolutely. And not only are the human limitations on the, the equipment removed, but the acquisitions and developmental uh, timelines associated with that, that weapon system is also greatly decreased. There, uh, there are capabilities that uh, get invented that, that are immediately put onto the aircraft and put into operation that would not be possible with some of the other airframes just because of how the technology is developed, what it's capable of, and also the removal of the, the human on the airframe itself. Immediately after you get trained and qualified to become a pilot, you're gonna start flying and you're gonna start flying a lot. And then just like the other rated fields, you're going to have an opportunity to become an instructor, to become an evaluator, to maybe go to weapons school, but there will also be the opportunities for command. These units, again, are never going away. We're going to have an increasing number of these types of aircraft 
flying various types of stories across the planet continuously. So there's a lot of opportunities for growth in this career field if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, for sure. And just like the other rated career fields, the expectation is that RPA pilots are going to be the ones who are providing the strategic guidance for how to employ these weapons. And so they're going to be found at every level of the Air Force, both in an advisory position, but also in command. You can absolutely expect that there will be general officers who are wearing RPA wings. Something that we ought to mention too, we've described that there will be a lot of deployments that these launch and recovery elements have to go out to launch and recover aircraft. They also have to embed with the air operation centers in order to do exactly what Colin described, help employ the aircraft appropriately. But you're also deployed in place. That's something that's really different that we are confronting for the first time as a service and as a nation. You're gonna walk into an operations floor and then you're gonna cross a line and now you're in Afghanistan. You're gonna leave that, and then you have to go pick up your kids from soccer that evening. So it's a real interesting dynamic that is only for those who are really strong and really ready to, to engage in that space. It's not for the faint of heart. No, it's not for sure. And that gets into a lot of what is going on with that career field right now. We mentioned the, the innovation. Part of the innovation that it is involved with that is how do we take care of our air crew members who are frequently deploying, but deploying in place, conducting operations uh, on behalf of the Air Force, deploying weapons, maybe taking lives, and having to deal with the effects of that, which is very different from how things used to be, where the, the fight and the war was always over there, and that there was some time available allowing people to decompress, work through all of these issues as they made their way back home. Yeah, absolutely. I will say though, it leaves me a lot of confidence knowing that it's in the hands, these ideas and these experiences are in the hands of some of these incredibly skilled professionals. If this is a career field you're interested in, it's absolutely a growth area. Please find some links in the description below to some information that we've been able to gather. And also, if you have more specific questions, find us on social media, find us at our email address at airforceofficerpodcast at gmail.com. If we don't have the answers for you, we're more than happy to put you in touch with someone who can answer those questions because it's all about finding the right people for the right job. Absolutely. And some of those right people in this career field are active in the Heritage Room. We invite you to come engage with them there. Go to airforceofficerpodcast.com, log, log into the Heritage Room and ask your questions. We would love to hear from you and hear your experiences and answer some of those questions some of the, and provide some of that information that is gonna be beneficial to others who are interested in this career field. Yep, appreciate it, Colin. And thank you to you for joining us today on Commission Ed.